Do you ever wish you could find something really nice just sitting by the side of the road? I recently found this two month old LG dishwasher sitting out for trash pickup. It is in excellent condition, except that it leaks water. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the crazy story of why they were throwing it away, show you how to fix this leaking dishwasher and how I end up installing this approximately $600 dishwasher in my house for a total of $7. My name is Reese and this dishwasher is a great reminder that people are throwing away useful and valuable things all the time. Things that you could get that may only need a frugal repair. So I see this dishwasher sitting by the side of the road and I decide to get out of my car and take a look at it. While I'm checking it over, the owner comes out and starts talking to me and I say, you know, what, what's up with this dishwasher? And they said, it's brand new. We only used it for two months and then we want to get rid of it. And I said, why? And they said, it had a water leak. It might be probably a very easy fix. And I said, well, why don't, why don't you fix it? Well, if it's that simple. And they said, get this, they said, we think it's cursed, so we don't want to put it back in our house. But they said, we loved it so much, it was the best dishwasher we ever had, we decided to go out and buy the exact same model and install it. So there's almost always an issue when something this nice is sitting out by the curb. They had told me that the dishwasher was leaking. Here is the valve that they pointed to as the source of the leak. Notice all the rust. Overall, the bottom side looks pretty good some cobwebs down here, and some rust on the heating element leads, but there's no other signs of corrosion from the water. Thankfully, removing this valve is pretty quick and easy. Remove the power connector, take off the two screws, and then disconnect the water hose. Besides the rust on this, one thing that's a little curious is the Teflon tape on the brass connector where the hot water line connects in. You don't normally want Teflon tape there because it's a compression fitting that goes on there. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. If you're fearful of repairing a leaking dishwasher, I hope this video gives you some courage to tackle the repair. Many times this valve is the source of the problem and you can see how quickly it can be removed. Now that I have the valve in hand, I can see the issue right away. Notice that big crack in the plastic. That will definitely cause a leak. I don't see anything else that's a problem, and printed on the back side of the solenoid is the information I need to order a new part. Next, I'm going to be cleaning up the heating element leads. To do this, I'll be using a combination of vinegar with a toothbrush and using some sandpaper, and then I'll be wiping them down with some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. And in the end, they are nice and clean. So I purchased a new high quality LG part on Amazon based off of the printed numbers on the old one, the cheaper aftermarket ones that were for sale had too many complaints about leaks, so I spent a little bit more to get this one. And if you're wondering about the costs at this point, I'll cover that later in the video. But here's the old one compared to the new one. It's basically the same thing, except the solenoid is a different color. Installing this valve is as easy as reversing the steps when I took out the old one. It only takes about a minute or two. And I'm expecting smooth sailing for this install, but as you'll see in a minute, when I get the old dishwasher out, I'm going to find a big problem. Also, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that the previous owner told me that they didn't have their thermostat set high enough and their water froze. That was the original cause for the trouble, so I don't have the same fear of it happening at my house. And that looks much better than the old one. It is time to remove the old dishwasher, sell it, and install this new one. And if you go to replace a dishwasher, here are the 10 steps you're going to need to follow. So first you need to turn off the power, should be obvious. Then you need to turn off the water or you're gonna get really wet. Then you need to disconnect the supply line from either the back or the front of the dishwasher. Then you need to disconnect the drain hose. Next, remove the bottom cover plate. This will give you access to the electrical wiring and the front supply hose. For the electrical wiring, make sure that the AC is off and take off the wire nuts and pull it through. Find your retaining clips and remove the screws that are holding the dishwasher in. And then you should be able to pull it right out. In my case, I needed to reuse these retaining clips because the one I found didn't come with them. So I'm going to reuse these. And the final step is to clean up the old one and sell it. I mentioned a problem and here it is. Just as I'm ready to hook everything back up, I see this crack in the drain hose that I hadn't seen before. I really didn't want to put the old dishwasher back in and I feel pretty stressed at this point. We have a big family and we need a running dishwasher. 
so I had to get creative. I ended up putting on some flexible adhesive and electrical tape, then rerouting the drain hose so that this section could be in a bucket under the sink. I installed the new dishwasher by reversing all of the steps that I used to take the old one out. The only difference was that I cut a larger hole in the cabinet to allow room for the hose to come in through the side. Basically, instead of routing the hose the normal way, which would be under the bottom side of the dishwasher, up the back, and then through the cabinet, I was able to route it from the side, and in this way, I was able to keep the majority of the hose in the bucket. And it ended up being a good thing that I did it this way, because my adhesive didn't hold. Apparently, I didn't read the instructions, and I missed the part that it said to allow 24 hours for the adhesive to become waterproof. I think I only let it sit for about 10 hours before I ran water through it, so we ended up limping along by dumping out the bucket every time we ran the dishwasher. Thankfully, the new hose arrived a few days later, but it did mean I had to pull the dishwasher out again and route the new hose the correct way. This whole thing was a little frustrating because I'm pretty sure I was the one that caused the crack when I was moving it around in my driveway. But it is a good reminder that if you get into repairing things, you need to expect problems. You need to have the attitude that you can fix it, but that roadblocks will come up. And in the end, though, you'll be able to figure it out. I really want to encourage all of you to have confidence to take on repairing things, even if they seem scary or you hit a wall, and understand that most things can be repaired. And you will learn so much about how things work and build up your own confidence. You know, years ago, I would have never attempted this repair. It would have been too scary for me to do. I don't know anything about dishwashers. You know, what if I cause a leak and damage my house and it gets expensive to fix? All these questions. But the regular pattern of trying something new, continuing to have confidence that if the professionals can do it, so can I. This thought has helped me to lower that fear threshold and give it a try. And I'd love to hear from you. What's a repair that was scary for you at first, but you tried to take it on anyway? or perhaps there was an obstacle you overcame that you're proud of, let me know in the comments section below. And after getting everything hooked back up the correct way, this dishwasher is on its first complete cycle. Down below, there's no leaks, and so it's time to put the soundproofing and cover plate on the bottom, and then check the dishes to see how they turned out. The dishes have come out very clean, and we've been really happy with this new dishwasher. Not only did we want a stainless steel one, this one has so many more energy saving and special features compared to our old lower end dishwasher. And the last thing to do before the final cost tally is to clean it up. These stainless steel wipes do a fantastic job. I'll put a link to them in the description below in case you're curious. So it's time to add everything up. The dishwasher was free. Our old supply hose was over 10 years old, so it's recommended to get a new one. The highly rated valve was $45. The new drain hose that I wasn't expecting to buy was $35 and we were able to sell our old dishwasher for $90. So that means we were out $7 for this practically brand new LG dishwasher. So there is a part to this story that makes me a little sad, and it's this. I picked up the dishwasher late on a Sunday evening. There was a bunch of other things that this particular family was throwing away as well. I didn't pick that stuff up. But I just so happened to be driving by this house on a Monday morning. So what, 10 hours or so later? The trash truck was there picking up the rest of the things and throwing it in the back of the truck. And I couldn't help but think, this dishwasher, had not I or someone else picked it up, would have been going back into the trash with everything else. And that's kind of, that's kind of sad because there are so many things that, that take an easy repair, don't cost a lot of money to get it up and running again. Now, that said, there are some things that are not worth your time and effort and money to fix, and you have to evaluate them before you, you know, put them out by the curb or before you go to pick them up to take them home to work on it yourself. You have to ask yourself, is this worth the risk? And you have to kind of evaluate it. In my case, I was able to ask the people. They came out and I was able to ask about some of the history of this dishwasher uh, because I was kind of like, I, I don't know if I want to take it. Uh, but they convinced me that it was worth it and that it would have been uh, you know, worth my time and effort to try to fix it. And in the end, you can see that it did work out well for our family. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. If you like repairing things, check out my repair playlist that I'll put up here. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing that and clicking the notification bell to get alerts when any new video comes out. And I hope you can join me on new repairs and adventures.